Zero Ranger has everything you could want from a game. Intense boss fights, vibrant retro graphics, an outstanding soundtrack, and an intricately woven narrative. Released on September 28th, 2018, Zero Ranger stands as a masterpiece among shoot-em-ups, if not games as a whole. The debut title from Finnish indie studio System Erasure, the game was first announced in 2009 as Final Boss. Following a name change and almost a decade of meticulous development, Zero Ranger has undoubtedly lived up to the anticipation. A self-described love letter to the shmup genre, Zero Ranger draws inspiration from acclaimed titles like Eskatos, Guxt, and Ikaruga, along with iconic mecha anime. The result is a game that not only pays homage to its influences, but stands out with its own unique charm. The gameplay, design, and soundtrack collectively showcase an incredible level of artistry, reflecting the tremendous amount of effort involved in creating a game of this caliber. Yet, what truly captivates me is the story told throughout Zero Ranger. Unfolding with each new attempt, your growing strength is paralleled by a deeper understanding of the true nature of your adversary. Piecing together each scrap of lore reveals a story far more intricate than first perceived. The game caters to both shmup veterans and newcomers, to those who love being engrossed in a story and to those who just enjoy the flashy visuals and fun gameplay. I highly encourage you to give the game a shot before watching any further, because in the following minutes I will put forward my best explanation for the story from beginning to end. This is the story of a fighter who wanted to become Zero Ranger. Our tale begins not at the game's start, but at the inception of the very universe, when a flower known as the Lotus Jewel bloomed, creating the stars and spreading life throughout space. Initially, these various life forms were united, basking in the radiance of the flower together. Yet one race, the Minusia, coveted the Lotus Jewel. Minusia fled with the jewel, their theft angering a race of onion-like beings who pursued them with the wrath of the stars. To defend themselves, the Minusia harnessed the power of the Lotus Jewel to create a god, the primeval fighter. The Minusia would also go on to develop Erasure, a supercomputer capable of erasing time and space. The primeval fighter swiftly vanquished the pursuing onions and departed to preemptively attack any other seeking to reclaim the jewel. However, as time passed, the fighter's journey began to weigh on them. The anguish from constant destruction and isolation would give rise to a manifestation of despair. Years later, the events of the main game unfold. Planet Daikon is under siege by an armada of alien ships, spearheaded by the planet-sized being codenamed Green Orange. In a desperate bid to avoid annihilation, all hope rests upon three sisters, Mido, Dori, and Renji, the inheritors of a bloodline capable of commanding the unique fighter ships Rib, Decker, and Grapefruit, modeled from the original Primeval Fighter. Renji, the most promising of the sisters, sets out in Grapefruit to confront Green Orange. Despite her efforts, the planetary defense force is seized, and all contact with Grapefruit is lost. Planet's fate hangs by a thread, with only two fighters standing in the way of complete destruction. With all odds pointing to defeat, we take control of either Mido or Dory and embark on our mission to save the world. Fighting past wave after wave of enemies, overcoming formidable bosses, and unlocking our fighter's latent potential, we make our way through each stage. Eventually, we reach the Sky Bridge only to encounter Rinji and Grapefruit, now under Green Orange's influence. After proving our worth in a bittersweet standoff, Rinji gives us the choice between two weapons, a sword that can slice through hell or a drill that can pierce the heavens. The chosen weapon unlocks the true potential of our fighter, granting the ability to transform into a Zero Ranger. Before we can fully test our newfound powers, a massive beam rains down from above as Rinji sacrifices herself to shield us from certain demise. With tears in our eyes, we press onward using our new weapon to fight our way inside Green Orange. After navigating through its labyrinthine structure, we finally confront the heart of the planet, eager to avenge our fallen allies. Engaging in a fierce battle, we ultimately triumph over the orb-spewing core. Despite our sacrifices, our victory is fleeting as the ugly truth reveals itself. The enemy has seized control of Erasure, their victory all but assured. Erasure reluctantly throws us against an onslaught of powerful opponents, culminating in an encounter with a sleeping monk imprisoned within Green Orange. Careful not to incur their wrath, we awaken the mysterious figure. Addressing us as a fellow Minusia, the monk begins to tell us a story from long ago, but Erasure intervenes before we can hear the rest of the tale. In a final effort to avoid any more suffering, Erasure erases time, sending us back to where our journey began. Before we continue any further, first, we need to talk about parallel universes. The reality we've been sent back to shows subtle differences from the original. 
While rotating all the power-ups we gained, the foes we encounter have stronger attacks, and dangerous new enemies emerge. The state of the world is even more dire, as the city appears more destroyed than before. These distinctions imply that we have been sent back in time and to an alternate reality altogether. The game over screen suggests that the Zero Ranger timeline does not adhere to a strictly linear progression, but a continuous cycle, only broken by attaining enlightenment. However, the events of each cycle seem to diverge based on the preceding run and the player's actions. Despite the variations in each reality, some factors do remain constant. Humanity is always under attack by a giant enemy, there is always a supercomputer AI, and the three sisters always exist in some form. This is even reflected in the game's stream trading cards, showing different iterations of the sisters' names. Returning to the story, we fight through the stages again, making our way back to the sky bridge where we encounter Rinji once more. If we confront her without activating the Zero Ranger form, the cycle repeats itself, culminating in a Ranger sending us back. However, should Rinji witness the Zero Ranger form, she acknowledges our strength in the true battle against Grapefruit, the Abaddon fighter, commences. Facing off with our sister in an even fiercer battle, we go drill against drill, determined to be victorious. With a spectacular explosion, we finish her off, no doubt making her proud of how strong we've become. Without time for a tearful goodbye, we race straight to the corrupted Erasure, who recognizes our return from the past. Desperate to end the arduous battle, she bestows a final power-up as a penance for her actions and the suffering we endured. Gathering the power-up results in the immediate destruction of Green Orange and the credits roll. Now a new game begins. Final Boss. We pilot an all-powerful ship and battle the King Onion. After easily defeating the King, we destroy the Lotus Jewel, realizing this ordeal was nothing more than a dream orchestrated by Green Orange. Before our memory can be erased, our recollection of Rinji saves us yet again, allowing us to escape the dream. Having rejected a perfect world, Erasure acknowledges our boundless courage and determination. Her job complete, she departs as we descend into the depths, where only despair awaits us. An ominous figure sits on a throne, cloaked in a hooded robe. They hurl waves of orbs at us, hardly seeming interested in the fight at all. After destroying enough waves, she begins to take us seriously, discarding her robe and revealing her true form the mysterious glowing woman from the intro cutscene. This is despair. She shifts gears, launching a flurry of attacks, lasers, swords, and the almighty bitch slap. Each is deadlier than the last as despair throws everything in her arsenal at us. We maneuver with newfound resilience, evading the onslaught and inching closer to overcoming despair's relentless assault. Our determination proving enough, we defeat Despair as Green Orange begins to collapse. Our battered ship narrowly escapes the crumbling planet as we reunite with Erasure. Green Orange has been defeated and the primeval fighter along with Despair have been destroyed. However, the fighter sustained critical damage, the life support systems failing. To make matters worse, with the last of planet Daikon's inhabitants annihilated, we are all that remains. It's a pinch. If Erasure sent us back, the same destructive cycle would begin anew. Yet amidst the darkness, there's a glimmer of hope. By absorbing energy particles resulting from the primeval fighter's destruction, we can endure prolonged time travel. In one last desperate effort, Erasure sends us back to the time of Despair's creation to eliminate the primeval fighter's original form. We have only one shot, and even success leaves the future uncertain. Putting it all on the line, we sacrifice everything, journeying to the past. With all restraints removed, our ship reaches its most powerful form, a glowing woman. The primeval fighter unleashes relentless attacks as all we can do is dodge. We evade the onslaught, absorbing the primeval fighter's power little by little until only the Lotus Jewel itself remains. This journey has been a long one. Whether we succeed now depends solely on our resolve. In a final push for enlightenment, we absorb the last of the Lotus Jewel's energy, causing it to collapse into itself. The collapse creates a vacuum of energy, rapidly expanding to envelop everything. The world is resetting, and a new universe shall be born. However, before it all returns to nothing, Erasure appears before us in human form, thanking us for everything, for reaching her sister when she could not, for perhaps stopping this endless cycle of suffering. As everything fades away, Erasure leaves us with a question. Would our new future accept her in despair if they are reborn?
Should we continue after the reset, we discover that this new reality has undergone another transformation. All allusions to erasure, despair, and Buddhism have vanished. The planet is called Earth instead of Daikon, humans instead of Manusia. The once enigmatic final boss, Despair, is now replaced by the Great Oppressor, while Erasure takes on the identity of a generic supercomputer named Regret. Despite these changes, the game plays on in its original fashion, and so the cycle continues. After all of that, there are still so many unanswered questions, countless theories without definite conclusions. Far too many for me to include in this one video. The identity of the monk, the precise origins of despair and erasure, what erasure needed to tell us, the significance of the pendant held by grapefruit, and the role of the onions in the overarching narrative all remain elusive. While some of these mysteries are resolved in System Erasure's subsequent game, Void Stranger, the answers to the remaining mysteries may emerge in the final Zero Ranger DLC, Black Onion. As the Black Onion DLC doesn't even have a release date, until it comes out, all we can do is speculate and form new theories. I hope you found some new insights from this video, or at the very least feel inspired to play Zero Ranger if you haven't already. Putting together information from my scattered thoughts, the occasional hallucination, and semi-cohesive Discord shitposts has been surprisingly difficult. If you spot any flaws or believe I got something wrong, feel free to delve into the story yourself and correct me in the comments. And most of all, thank you for watching.